For years, the global hydrogen industry has been fixated on electrolyzers. PM, alkaline, and solid oxide systems have dominated the conversation. Gigafactories have been announced. Billions in capital have poured into scaling production. Governments from the US to Europe to Asia have framed electrolyzers as the centerpiece of their clean hydrogen strategies. But what if the most important breakthrough in hydrogen doesn't come from improving electrolyzers at all? What if a single emerging technology, quietly developing in labs and pilot plants, has the potential to make today's electrolyzer designs look outdated, inefficient, and fundamentally uncompetitive? This is the story of a disruptive idea, one so bold and so transformative that it could change the entire trajectory of the hydrogen economy. This is the technology that could make all existing electrolyzers obsolete. To understand why this breakthrough matters, let's start with the limitations of current electrolyzer technologies. PM and alkaline electrolyzers rely on membranes, catalysts, and complex balance of plant components. They require purified water. They degrade under dynamic operation. They depend on expensive materials like iridium and platinum in some cases. Their efficiency varies depending on temperature, load, and operating conditions. And most importantly, their economics are inseparably tied to the fluctuating cost of electricity. Electrolyzers work best when electricity is cheap and abundant. When power prices are high, hydrogen becomes expensive. The entire cost structure depends on grid conditions and renewable energy availability. This makes electrolyzers sensitive, fragile, and economically unstable under certain conditions. Even with scaling and gigafactories, they still operate under the heavy weight of legacy constraints. But imagine an alternative that doesn't rely on expensive membranes, doesn't require ultra-pure water, doesn't degrade when electricity fluctuates, and can generate hydrogen at high efficiency using materials far cheaper than today's catalysts. Imagine a system that could run at high temperatures, integrate with industrial waste heat, and operate like a chemical reactor rather than an electrical appliance. This is where the disruptive technology enters the story. High temperature hydrogen production, specifically solid oxide electrolysis, SOE, combined with thermal integrated hydrogen systems and thermochemical cycles like the sulfur iodine and copper chlorine processes. These systems don't merely tweak existing electrolyzer designs, they reinvent the entire physics behind hydrogen production. High temperature solid oxide electrolysis operates at temperatures between 700 degrees Celsius and 900 degrees Celsius, allowing water molecules to be split with dramatically lower electrical energy input. The energy penalty of conventional electrolysis is replaced by heat. Heat that can come from nuclear reactors, concentrated solar power, industrial waste, or next-generation geothermal systems. Instead of relying solely on electricity, these systems use thermal energy to drive the chemical reaction. The result is startlingly high efficiency that surpasses all known PEM or alkaline systems. In some configurations, solid oxide electrolyzers can achieve up to 90% efficiency when integrated with waste heat. At these levels, hydrogen begins to look fundamentally different, not as a power-hungry process, but as an intelligent co-product of industrial thermal systems. But solid oxide electrolysis is only one part of the story. Researchers and companies are experimenting with thermochemical hydrogen production cycles, processes that split water using chemical loops rather than electricity. These cycles operate at high temperatures, leveraging the reactivity of chemical compounds to sequentially release and regenerate oxygen and hydrogen. The sulfur iodine cycle, for example, can theoretically produce hydrogen at high efficiencies when coupled with advanced heat sources. The copper chlorine cycle offers hydrogen production at moderate temperatures, making it compatible with concentrated solar and industrial heat streams. These processes require no membrane, no iridium, no PEM stack, and no complex water purification system. Instead, they rely on chemistry and thermal engineering, the same fields that built modern industrial chemistry and petrochemical refining. This shift from electricity-centric to heat-centric hydrogen production fundamentally challenges the core assumptions of today's electrolysis market. If hydrogen can be made more efficiently through thermochemical cycles or solid oxide devices, 
the economic model for PM and alkaline systems collapses. Their gigafactories, supply chains, and manufacturing lines become economically vulnerable. The price of membrane materials, catalyst metals, and balance of plant components becomes irrelevant, and the competition shifts from improving electrolyzer stacks to controlling the availability of high-temperature heat sources. Suddenly, nuclear reactors, concentrated solar farms, geothermal wells, and industrial waste heat recovery systems become the most valuable hydrogen assets. Hydrogen becomes not just an electrical conversion technology, but a thermal conversion technology. And the companies that master this new paradigm could leapfrog those still building 20th century electrolyric devices. The implications ripple across the entire energy landscape. Consider the role of advanced nuclear reactors, small modular reactors, SMRs, and high temperature gas reactors, HTGRs, are being developed specifically to supply industrial heat. These reactors could integrate directly with solid oxide systems, producing hydrogen at extremely low marginal cost. Instead of building massive renewable electrolyzer plants that require large land areas and extensive grid connections, a single SMR hydrogen facility could produce hydrogen at stable, predictable costs 24 hours a day. In this configuration, hydrogen becomes a co-product of nuclear heat, not an intermittent renewable process. This transforms the cost structure entirely. Concentrated solar power, CSP plants, offer another integration pathway. CSP systems already produce high temperature thermal energy using mirrors and heliostats. Thermochemical hydrogen cycles can plug directly into CSP fields, generating hydrogen when sunlight is abundant. Without relying on electrochemical membranes, expensive catalysts, or high electrical loads, this creates a solar-to-hydrogen pathway that avoids the limitations of conventional electrolyzers. Instead of electricity, electrolyzer, hydrogen, the process becomes sunlight, heat, chemical reaction, hydrogen. The efficiency potential is enormous, and the hardware required is largely based on steel, ceramics, and industrial components, not precious metals. Even geothermal power plants can benefit. Supercritical geothermal wells produce high-temperature steam that can feed solid oxide systems or hybrid thermochemical processes. Hydrogen becomes another product of geothermal energy, expanding the role of geothermal beyond electricity generation. But the most surprising integration opportunity lies in industrial waste heat. Refineries, cement plants, steel mills, aluminum smelters, and chemical factories generate massive amounts of untapped thermal energy. Today, this heat is often vented into the atmosphere. With high-temperature hydrogen systems, waste heat becomes a valuable asset that dramatically lowers hydrogen costs. It allows industries to produce hydrogen internally using energy they already generate. This is a breakthrough in circular industrial design and reduces dependence on external hydrogen suppliers. This shift threatens the existing electrolyzer business model. PM and alkaline manufacturers have built large gigafactories and positioned themselves to dominate the global hydrogen market. But if high temperature and thermochemical systems achieve commercial scale, the competitive landscape will rapidly change. Scale manufacturing alone will not protect legacy electrolyzer companies from a disruptive alternative that is more efficient, less resource intensive, and better suited to industrial integration. This is not just a technological disruption. It is a financial one. Investors evaluating green hydrogen projects often face concerns about electricity costs, grid availability, and utilization rates. High temperature hydrogen systems mitigate many of these risks by shifting energy inputs toward heat rather than electricity. Financing becomes simpler because the economics are more stable and predictable. Because thermochemical and solid oxide systems operate closer to industrial processes, they also align better with existing energy infrastructure and supply chains. There is also a geopolitical angle. Countries with strong nuclear programs, advanced industrial heat infrastructure, or concentrated solar resources could dominate hydrogen production. This undermines assumptions that hydrogen geography will follow renewable energy geography. Instead, hydrogen leadership could shift toward countries with high temperature heat capabilities. This creates a new map of competitiveness. 
one that many policymakers have not yet considered. Despite the promise, these technologies face real challenges. Solid oxide systems operate at extremely high temperatures, requiring specialized ceramics and thermal management. Thermochemical cycles involve corrosive chemicals and complex reactors. Scaling these technologies is not trivial, but neither was scaling lithium-ion batteries, solar panels, or semiconductors. With the right investment, the next decade could see high-temperature hydrogen systems evolve from niche prototypes to industrial powerhouses. The question then becomes, when will this disruption begin? Signs are already emerging. Several pilot plants are integrating solid oxide electrolysis with nuclear and industrial heat. Leading research institutions are testing thermochemical cycles at scale. Venture capital and sovereign funds are quietly investing in high-temperature hydrogen companies. Even electrolyzer manufacturers are acknowledging the trend by diversifying into hybrid systems. The most important takeaway is this. Hydrogen production is far from settled. The dominance of PEM and alkaline electrolysis is not guaranteed. A disruptive shift is coming, driven by the simple truth that hydrogen production must become cheaper, more efficient, and more integrated with heavy industry. High temperature hydrogen production, whether through solid oxide systems or thermochemical cycles, offers a pathway to break the economic boundaries that limit today's electrolyzers. This does not mean today's electrolyzers will disappear overnight. Instead, we are witnessing the beginning of a technological divergence. Low temperature electrolyzers may continue to expand for small and mid-scale applications, mobility, refueling, and distributed production. But large-scale industrial hydrogen production, the kind required for steel, ammonia, refining, aviation fuels, and global export, may migrate toward high temperature systems. This is where the economics improve dramatically, where integration creates value and where the next wave of innovation will occur. If this transition happens, it will rewrite the competitive landscape of hydrogen. The companies, countries, and industrial clusters that embrace high temperature hydrogen first could leap ahead. And those that remain locked into legacy electrolyzer paradigms may find themselves outpaced by a new generation of technologies that operate on entirely different principles. This is the billion dollar disruption everyone missed. Hydrogen's future may not belong to better electrolyzers, but to the technologies that eliminate the need for electrolyzers altogether.